Hello everybody, Film Trigger here. My name is Stevie Cade and we have another week of news to catch up on. First of all, San Diego Comic-Con campaign has officially closed and we raised nearly $15,000 for the Awareness of Suicide Prevention Foundation. That is amazing. You guys did such a good job. Everything you've selflessly done is very admirable and I applaud you guys. Uh, I can't wait to see what the next campaign is. You guys are the masters at this, but if you want some ideas, hit me up. Deborah Snyder posted some Army of the Dead love on Vero, saying the gang is all here. Can't wait to see this movie on Netflix. Uh, I'm so happy that Zack Snyder is at Netflix now. They're, they're going to treat him right, unlike those jerk-offs over at Warner Brothers. Anyway, Justice League designer Patrick Totopoulos shares eerie cyborg concept art. And eerie it is. So dark, so brooding. <laughs> of course, you know, we wouldn't get these from the Warner Brother release because it's too scary. He also shows some release the Snyder Cut love. Warner Brothers, come on, just release the damn thing. What is your deal? Straight to DVD on your streaming site. Just release the mother... Sorry. <sighs> Collect yourself, Steven. Collect yourself. Matt Reeves Batman gets Rogue One cinema photographer Greg Frazier. Sweet. James Gunn confirms that Thor Love and Thunder will take place before Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which leads me to believe that at some point, probably in the beginning of Thor, we're going to see him transfer from the Guardian ship. We're going to see the Guardians of the Galaxy in Thor, which will be cool. And speaking of Thor, Jane Foster, played by Natalie Portman, will be called Mighty Thor in lieu of Lady Thor because I guess even specifying gender now is offensive or something, I, I don't know. But whatever, Mighty Thor, cool. Deadpool 2 director David Leach is hopeful that the series will continue in the MCU. They have to. You can use that Deadpool wormhole to bring in the X-Men and Fantastic Four team. You can honestly keep Colossus the same because he was never shown in any other of the X-Men, so I'm 100% on board with that. Andy Serkis and talks to direct Venom 2. Sweet! I mean, that makes that makes perfect sense. I mean, the, the mocap master himself directing a movie that where the good guy and the bad guy are both CGI and require mocap. Perfect. He, he's a great director. I love his darker visions, and I think him directing will bring Venom into a grittier tone, which is kind of where I think we all wanted it to be. We could see they tried to do that in the first one a little bit, but it was like a hit and miss. Sometimes it seemed like a horror movie, sometimes it seemed like a regular Marvel comedy bit, you know? So hopefully he kind of balances that out. Stan Lee, looking like he might get a street name in his honor. The New York City Council voted to have University Avenue in the Bronx be changed to Stan Lee Way. Only thing that needs to happen is the mayor needs to sign off on the proposal. So I think he deserves that. Even as diverse as New York is, when major tragedies happen, they've been shown time and time again to join together as one family. And that's 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 what I love about New York. Stan Lee put that in light in his comics and that translated into the films. Give him a street name. It's the, the least you can do. James Cameron congratulates Endgame for passing Avatar's box office record. Yay, they can be nice in Hollywood. Good job, guys. But speaking of box office records, Lion King has already pushed out Aladdin within two weekends. So, But Aladdin still beat a billion dollars, which was Will Smith's first billion dollar box office hit, being followed by Independence Day. So congratulations to you, Will Smith. And congratulations to Disney beating out Disney. Good for them. <laughs> Ben Affleck and Matt Damon are teaming up again to write and possibly star in Riley Scott's The Last Duel. Um, these guys haven't actually worked together since Bidwell Hunting in 1997, in which they won an Oscar for. That brought them into the A-list status. When these two come together, magic happens. Quentin Tarantino's rated R Star Trek script is set in the Chris Pine timeline, which is really cool because I love those Star Trek movies. The first one, still the best. They've been kind of trying to recapture that magic since then. I'm not sure if he's going to use the same cast or use a completely different cast, but still have it in the same universe. But either way, I think that's a good idea. And the Revenant screenwriter, Mark Smith, is set to do the screenplay. 
Also, Quentin Tarantino and Uma Thurman are still discussing Kill Bill 3. Let's let's roll with it. Kill Bill 3. I'm down. Vin Diesel confirms Reddit 4 script is written and posted a video on it on Twitter. Let's take a look. Riddick for Furia. By, written by David N. Tui. David Tui. Tui. And everyone wants to be a beast until it's time to do what real beasts do. I, I really do like the Reddick series. Uh, I know they were never absolute blockbusters. It seems to be creeping its way into a cult classic. Uh, it started off with Pitch Black, which wasn't a true Reddick movie, but they kind of spun the other movies into focusing just on him. So I think that was a really cool way to do it. I love the character and I'd really like to see what else they can do with that. So Todd McFarlane's long awaited Spawn reboot needs more funding. How did you not see this coming, Todd? <laughs> Uh, come on, man, get it together. You need some help. Get somebody who's done these movies and let them help you out. I really want to see this movie get made, so let's get our feet on the ground and go. Get that movie made. George Miller confident that Mad Max Fury Road sequels will happen. Cool. Everybody likes those movies. I'm not sure why they haven't done it yet. So, set photos of Christopher Nolan's Tenet reveal the title logo that seems like a totally Christopher Nolan style you never know what you're gonna get all gonna be twisted up and a mind bender of some kind I am sure original Michael Myers Nick Castle returning for Halloween kills although he did cameo in the 2018 Halloween James Jude Courtney was credited as the shape of Michael Myers because he's pretty much the one that wore the mask for the rest of the movie at the beginning of the movie when he had the mask off that was Nick Castle but I guess he's returning to play Michael Myers, I guess in its entirety for this next movie. So rock on, man, speak. And Rutger Hauer has passed away. He was in movies like Blade Runner, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Sin City, and Batman Begins. Rest in peace, my friend. And that's all the news for this week. Uh, if I missed anything, please let me know in the comment section below. And while you're hanging out down there, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell ding thing so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay trigger happy, my friends. Peace. Could be a very intense movie. Maybe he'll get attacked by a alien bear. I don't even know. Okay, just forget I said that. Set photos of Christopher Nolan's Tenet. 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 Jedi.